Whoa, it's been almost two years since I reviewed the previous Morphine M600 Mini PC. How much has changed? Thanks to my viewers, I've gone full-time on YouTube, visited Computex 2024, and most importantly, refined the review testing methodology to provide a comprehensive overview of each Mini PC, which has also helped to find issues lurking in the shadows. And that being said, let me take the nostalgia from revisiting the same box, put it in this hand, and throw it out the window. Because there's no room for manufactured enthusiasm or emotions here. Instead, we're coming to a conclusion on how the M600 holds up based on testing the shit out of it and comparing it to what's already available on the market. So, join me as I reveal all the deeply ingrained secrets of the Morphine M600 AMD flagship right after this short message. Ease Us To Do Backup Home is an award-winning backup solution to keep your data safe. Backup, clone, upgrade, or transfer your system easily, and protect it from ransomware. To Do Backup Home even supports backing up to the cloud. Trial it for free with a link in the video description. Morphine's M600 was one of the earlier mini PCs to go bigger in size and stop sticking to the classic 4x4 inch Intel NUC design. This allowed for a bigger heatsink and fan, and more options on the board such as two 2280 M.2 slots. While the nice metal case is back, the build quality is much improved. The M600 from two years ago had some manufacturing marks and blemishes, while this unit is all good. And on top of that, there have also been some changes under the hood. The big one is the CPU, and there are a few options. But this M600 has AMD's Ryzen 8945HS flagship as the top tier option, which is 8 cores, 16 threads, with Radeon 780M graphics. The bare bones starts at US$499 on the official website, and the one I'm reviewing came with 32GB of DDR5 and 500GB storage, which is US$629, US or you can go higher for more dollars depending on your needs. It's cool to see a very compact 120 watt power supply included in the box, along with the usual stuff. Although the 2.5 inch SATA cable for additional storage and the RAM heatsink is not common. One thing missing that was included previously is the vertical stand, which is a shame as I thought it was a nice bonus. The front of the Mini has the USB 4 port which supports power delivery and display, along with a couple of USB 3 5 gigabit ports. The USB-C port worked fine being powered and displaying on my USB-C monitor. On the back of the Mini are three USB 2, another USB 3 5 gigabit, and you can have three displays using the HDMI 2.1, DisplayPort 1.4, and USB 4 at the front. I don't have the hardware to test above 4K 60Hz, so I asked Morphine for clarification, and the answer was 4K 60Hz is the limit for the display outputs. I don't know about that. At least DisplayPort and USB 4 should be able to go higher. But there you go. Dual Realtek 2.5 gigabit LAN is included, along with a MediaTek Wi-Fi 6 card for wireless. And Bluetooth range is the best recorded yet for uninterrupted audio with no artifacts, smashing the myth that a metal case will perform worse. In fact, both top results so far use metal cases. It's all about the placement and antennas. In the M600, they're placed under the plastic top lid, and it works great. Also happy to report there weren't any issues with wireless using the 5G band at 12 meters or 39 feet from the router. The whole gaming session was free of any network issue notifications. There's a two-sided approach to opening the Morphine M600 depending on what you want to do. To open the top lid, there are two screws at the back to remove, and then I find it easiest to pry open by pushing up on the lid through one of the screw holes. And this top lid is where you can attach the 2.5 inch storage drive. The included DDR5 5600 RAM sticks don't have memory exposed on this side, so the included heatsink isn't of any use. Oh, and the memory and crucial P3 Plus drive only has a small fan on the top lid to cool it. The bottom cover has four glued on rubber feet covering the screws, which unfortunately hasn't changed. Once the feet are off and the screws are out, Remove the cover for access to the second M.2 Gen 4 storage drive. This CPU fan should be enough to remove the heat from it, but it would have been nice to see heat sinks included for both M.2 drives. The bare bones option requires you to install your own memory, storage and OS, while the pre-build comes with Windows 11 Pro. Ubuntu worked fine from the USB drive tests for those wanting to use the Penguin instead. 
In single core Cinebench, the M600 is close to the other 8945HS MIDI's tested. For multicore, it's in second place, with the UM890 Pro ahead of it. Geekbench also has the M600 as the second best 8945HS in single core, and in multicore, it's the same result, although this time the margin shrinks. And the H264 video encoding test, again, confirms the result. AV1 CPU encoding has the M600 as a top AMD Ryzen Mini at default, but with performance mode enabled, the UM890 slightly comes out ahead. Morphine's M600 also comes out as a top Ryzen performer in AV1 GPU encoding, just edging out the other results. It also performs well in the integrated graphics test, being one of the top results in DX11 and pushing past the 3000 mark in DX12. In the latest Steel Nomad Lite graphics benchmark, it took the second AMD Ryzen spot. So, it has very good CPU and GPU performance. The crucial P3 Plus SSD used in this Mini is commonly used and has pretty average Gen 4 sequential read and write speeds. It's fine for most usage cases. Alright, to check the RAM isn't overheating, we're going to do a simple 30 minute test. And as you can see, after half an hour, there isn't a big change in the frame rate. We've already looked at so many minis with a Radeon 780M, and the conclusion hasn't changed. It makes for a great eSports gaming mini PC that allows you to play most games at 1080p, or go up to 1440p with lower detail settings. Many AAA games up until last year or so can be played at 1080p low with decent frame rates. But the newer ones need image upscaling or frame generation to give good gaming experiences. The latest emulators run well at 1080p. While PS2, GameCube and Wii can go up to 1440p resolution. You might even get away with 4K for a select few titles. Another option to game on the M600 is to add an eGPU using the USB 4 port. While it has limited bandwidth, you can add a much more powerful GPU into the mix. There's not much to say about video editing. Such a powerful CPU does well with my 4K video project, even if Intel's QuickSync hardware decoding feature is superior. Alright, let's have a quick look at the BIOS options. If you're looking for AC power loss, it's an advanced AMD CBS. Other options that might be of use can be found in advanced OEM features management. There's also a fan curve option in the BIOS, which I set manually, but didn't seem to do anything. Idle power draw at 9 watts is better than average. And the maximum around 100 watts should mean you'll be okay using 100 watts for powering it with USB-C. The maximum CPU temp at 90C comes back as an average result. Unfortunately, idle fan noise on the M600 is one of the highest. While on the load, it goes up a bit higher and is around average against the competition. Oh, I should also point out that when you power on the Mini, it does a brief self-test of the fan, which is loud. Some will find this annoying, and it can't be turned off, so I'm pointing it out. Both temp sensors showed 60C for the NVMe drive during the thrash test, which is one of the high results, but should still be low enough not to thermal throttle when pushed for long periods. Those using heavy storage workloads might want to invest in a heatsink. Alright, so in a crowded field, the Morphine M600 sets itself apart by offering three storage options, dual M.2 Gen 4 and a 2.5 inch SATA drive. The nice metal case is back, this time blemish free, although the glued on rubber feet need to go. 
Wireless range is also better than most. It's good to see a variety of options for storage and memory configurations on the website. Seven USB ports are really nice, but three are USB 2 and the other a 5 gigabit. What I don't like is that the vertical stand is no longer being included. As with most mini PCs, I'd prefer if it was easier to open up. Idle fan noise is high and changing the fan option in the BIOS didn't do anything. Load fan noise is okay, but if fan noise bothers you, be aware the M600 has constant audible fan noise. An SD card reader would be nice for a fourth storage option, which would beat nearly every mini PC out there. So there's lots of improvements with this new M600, and it is a better mini PC than the one I reviewed two years ago, but the fan noise is up substantially at idle. Apart from that, it's a very competent mini PC that gets a lot of things right. If you need the multi-storage option, it's one of the few available that can support three drives. Find the link in the video description if you're interested, and you might want to check out my review of Morphine's M8S, which is one of my favorite N100 mini PCs right here. Cheers!